Hey, everyone. All right. This is nerve-wracking as it is, so please get out. <laughs> this worked perfectly in my room like two hours ago when no one was there. So, All right. Um, sexy defense. I love the title. This, this is one I came up for, especially for DerbyCon. Um, this is a quick agenda, what we're going to go through. Uh, this is me. I'm a novice doing some business with IOActive. I'm a hacker, researcher, a really sucky developer, uh, but very secure one. All my shit works on my computer, and that's it. <laughs> um, um, I used to do a lot of research on cybercrime, which made, led me to all sorts of weird places, uh, connecting crime to governments, which is like super fun, but super scary. Uh, I run the DEF CON group back in Tel Aviv, Israel. Woo! Um, on the rest of my spare time, I've helped set up the very cool concept of PTS, Penetration Testing Execution Standard, uh, which is super awesome community effort, like 70 contributors put out the badass document uh, that includes everything and it's for free. And it's better than any pen testing book you'll ever buy in your life. So go, yeah. go get it. Yeah. <laughs> And the rest of my free time, I still do some reserve duty with the Israel Air Force, doing some cyber shit and red teaming and, and all sorts of fun. But most of all, um, dirty security, which is, from my perspective, the only way to do security. So some background. What the hell am I doing here talking to you guys about defense? It's like, this sucks, right? Um, well, I, most of my work is offense. And... The other part of it is doing defense on all the offensive shit that we did and broke everything for our clients. So it usually started, the, the whole thinking process for me started from, all right, someone had a vulnerability assessment done and maybe passed a pen test, which is like the fancy way of saying I do vulnerability assessment with people actually thinking. Uh, but what does it really get a business to do a pen test? Well. Uh, not a lot, actually. Um, you do get to check off the compliance thing, which, which is neat, and then that's what you usually pay, like, you know, bottom dollar for some suck-ass company to walk in and run a Nessus scan, and, yeah. Uh, but, sorry, Nessus. <laughs> um, but on the other hand, you really don't get anything in terms of security posture, because you don't. It doesn't mean anything. Um, and then, you know, if, if you kind of go along that line of vuln assessment, pen testing, you may have gotten a red team because the pen tester says that you're good after like three or four iterations and they patched everything and it's like, I know exactly what you're going to do now, so I'm ready. So it's all like green, 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 green. Um, and then you had a red team and that's usually us. We come in and blow the shit out of everything. And we get like a scale of feelings after a red team. First is like, <laughs> what? But I'm compliant. So it's like, nah, uh -uh. you got something wrong. It's, it's, we're compliant. There's no way that you did what you did in here. It's like cheating or something like that. It's like, what the fuck were you doing in my network or in my building stealing this, all this stuff? And you're not playing by the rules, right? Uh, and then they're like, yeah, you're not playing by the rules, and this is out of scope, so it doesn't really apply to me, right? And once every blue moon, we get like, wow, you know what? <laughs> I get everything that you said. It's like, I totally dig it. Gap analysis, this is where we should be. This is, you know, what you told us that we should do because we broke this uh, security model, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I've, yet to see one of these, so <laughs> if you have, please, please tell them to come over. Um, so it got me thinking, all right, so how, how do we actually fix this thing that called security posture on, on the defensive side? Because they suck all the time and we keep getting in uh, and nothing really gets better. Uh, so I usually start with the bad pen, test, pen testing reports because someone actually did some work and some of it may actually be useful. It's just very hard to find that useful part. Um, 
So I usually take old pen, old pen testing reports or, or new pen testing reports, you know, blow the dust off of them because they're like sitting on some, someone's desk or, or shelf, um, and start kind of digging through them to figure out how can we use them to figure out what, what's really, what really matters to the company. Um, now this, you know, the next five minutes are going to be boring because I'm going to talk about terminology and, and stuff like that that you need to talk to management and explain to them in their terms and don't scare them with like bits and bytes and vulnerabilities and exploits. Uh, so I'll try to like run through it. Um, you, you got the slide, so you can, you can look at it later. Uh, I usually like to talk in, in, you know, these terminology, vulnerability, exposure, threat, and risk. Yeah, otherwise you're not getting paid. I mean, you're not going to get the budget to do the fun stuff that, that you need to do. So vulnerabilities, um, unfortunately, they're usually defined as software issues. And as anyone who has ever done a red team or was on the receiving end of a red team knows that vulnerabilities are not just software issues. It's, it's got to do with logic and processes and operational stuff because that's how the business operates. Right? I have never seen a business that just operates on software and technology. Correct me if I'm wrong. Exposure. What? Can we just talk about vulnerabilities? No. Exposure is connecting a vulnerability to a threat model. A vulnerability does not just you know, exist in thin air. It's something that an attacker would use to get into to break the process. Uh, so you have to correlate it somehow to a threat model, to someone, to that you know, particular someone who wants to break it. Which brings us to threat. What is a threat? It's, again, a threat agent or a threat community that's out there to get you. It's you know, ninjas on the lawn or hackers or spies from Russia or China or your competitors. They can be internal, they can be external. You have to classify them by their capabilities, all right? If it's the cleaning lady, She's got no Metasploit foo, um, but she's got like a lot of access to the assets. Uh, if it's the Chinese hacker, yeah, they have Metasploit foo, but they're out there in China. And then after you compounded all those you know, neat terminologies, you talk about risk, okay? Which is a numerical factor. It's math, it's easy. We're engineers, we should be able to express risk fairly easily, it's a matter of probability. How probable is this threat to this vulnerability to affecting my assets? All right, simple, done with the boring stuff. Yes. So after I kind of you know, dug through all those pen, pen testing reports, got, you know, identified the, the actual vulnerabilities, not the stupid XSSs or the, you know, I rooted your, your Linux server on the DMZ, which I don't give a fuck about. Um, I'm talking about methodology now. How do I actually properly defend this business? Defend, sorry, this business. And we've been doing this really badly and really in the same way for a very, very long time. All the way back to you know, when we were defending things with walls. We're still doing that. And this is how you know, we see the outside through that wall. The defenses that we've put in for ages and decades block our view of you know, oncoming attackers and force us to look at things in a very, very narrow perspective, which kind of sucks, right? I've put in those AVs and the firewalls and the IDSs and the IPSs and I don't see anything coming in because everything is just blocked and obscured by those fancy blinking lights that I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars that don't really work because I'm still getting owned like day after day after day and you know AVs still kind of pop up and say you know what I found this infection oh by the way this has been here for like what six three seven months I'm cleaning it for you now oh great seven months in, in, the, in my network and now you're cleaning it uh, so yeah we're, we're getting like a really really bad view of like the playing field on our hand this is what the attacker sees again for a long long time when I'm attacking someone, they don't even know that I've been looking at them and profiling them and gathering intelligence on them for a month now, all right? So I have a very clear view of what's going on, who's coming in, who's coming out, you know, when is the cleaning lady leaving and, and when, does the, when do the guards go out for a drink at night and I have a precise view of their defenses and how everything works. 
and I still do for modern businesses. Right? I know what firewall vendor they're using, I know what IDS they're using, I know the brand of AV, I know what software they're using. So every, I have all the information before I send a single packet to their network. Okay? What's the con conclusion? Oh, sorry. It's not fair. Right? We'll get back to that. So again, this is what the attacker sees, and this I've, I've diligently stole this from the penetration testing execution standard because this is what what we kind of uh, uh, go through in terms of the methodology. Uh, I'm running through intel gathering, volume research, and until this point, no one sees me. Right? I can do research on every piece of software that you run in your business. And again, not a single packet. You have no idea that I'm profiling you and, and, and about to own the shit out of your business. And then I run an exploit, which is very targeted because I know everything that you've been doing. Uh, establish control, command control channels, and get everything out post-exploit. On the defensive side, we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. Uh, we're really good at detection after the exploit and control is done, all right? Again, usually weeks, months after the attack has actually succeeded. And we're very good at mitigation and containment. This is incident response 101, you know, shut down computers, no. <laughs> Not really good. I'm, I'm trying to be positive here, I'm sorry. <laughs> Otherwise I would be like, oh, fuck this business, this is horrible. <laughs> Uh, so we're, we're trying to be good at, at like incident response and shutting computers down and cleaning them up and patching and, and trying to delete the Excel files and, and put them back in the spam folder. It's like, don't touch it. It's, it wasn't spam. Uh, and this is what we're missing. And this is exactly what I'm trying to kind of get security and defense uh, to do properly. Because if the attacker has all that spectrum, all right, we need to broaden our spectrum a little bit and kind of you know, poke bigger holes in those walls so we can see better who is coming out to get us, get intelligence on them, because if they do that to me, what prevents me from profiling and, and gathering intel on my threat communities and threat agents? All right? We said it before, it's not fair. It should be just as not fair to them as it is to us. And then do a lot of data correlation because I'm, you know, on the defensive side, I need to correlate a lot of shit that's going on that may be false positive or just people poking on my website trying to figure out, you know, am I competitive enough, am I not, just, you know, randomly scanning me. And so this is, these are the parts that we're going to talk about in the next, like, 40 minutes. And remember, doing defense sucks and it's hard, but it can be interesting. All right? It's not about egos, it's not about people, uh, it's not about skills, all right? very differently than an offense, which were like, ooh, look at the rock stars, look at the heroes, look at the you know, people with O-days and shit like that. Defense, no, you gotta be diligent, you gotta do your homework, you gotta figure out who's out there to get you and be a step ahead of them, or at least close the gap because they're 10 steps ahead of you, let them be like one or two, maybe. Uh, and remember, it's not fair. You're, you are going to fail, all right? You're always going to be in a situation, in a mindset that you need to improve because shit keeps coming out and keeps affecting you and things constantly change. And once you think you got something going on right, the business changes. And you have new processes and new technology and new partners that you need to work with and you need to adapt to that, all right? So once you embrace it, it becomes easier. It's a very kind of zen attitude to defense. Um, so again, your job is to identify those gaps constantly and try to close them down or at least minimize them or account for them in the context of risk, all right? There's no point of trying to, you know, there's a new Linux, SSH, O-Day, whatever it is. I have no Linux boxes in my internal networks, just some, you know, screwed up public web server that's not connect, connected to anything, the risk that that server means to me is zero. I'm just going to, you know, re-image it if you root it. Have fun. You know, keep going at it. I don't give a shit. It doesn't affect my business. So, you know, don't just throw money at, at new shiny O-days that, that come out if they don't really affect you. 
So the first part of figuring out where to put the money and how to focus my defenses in, is mapping. What the hell am I defending? All right. I'm a business. I need to map the stuff that makes my business make money. All right. I need to figure out what are my assets. All right. What are the processes through which I make money, which includes the people, and yes, sometimes the technology, sometimes thir third parties, right? And again, this is, we, we're not doing this right. If I'm like the IT security guy, assets, processes, people, it's like, uh, no, 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 I have this network and, you know, it's on Visio and I just protect this server and that server and have firewalls and best practices and stuff like that and I've, you know, I have subscription to a million services and, and, and Seam and SOC and I got it all nailed down, but it's got nothing to do with what I'm actually trying to protect, right? And, and mapping is hard. We're still trying to improve it, okay? I mean, this is kind of, yeah. <laughs> and so it's really hard because you need to talk to other people that are not in IT, that are not engineers that run a business and have assets and make money and you need to figure out how do I affect this and how do I actually protect this kind of very wobbly thing called a business. And after I map the assets and processes and, and again how this whole thing works, only then I talk about security and intelligence assets. All right? I have those firewalls. I have all those you know, database security and WAFs and IDSs, are they effective? Are, are they placed you know, in the proper locations that affect the security of my processes and my assets? Okay, you'll be amazed just by this, how much you can get your security posture you know, improved as opposed to just running pen tests and vulnerable assessments and whatnot. After we mapped out the business, you can start mapping out the gaps, all right? The exposures and the issues that we talked about before. And again, start from, from a rep report, because again, someone did some work, you just need to adjust it and apply it to all this new fangled mapping that I have of the business. Uh, so work up from there, weeding out all the bullshit and, and stuff that doesn't matter. Um, there isn't really like a magic solution for this. I just I you know, like to use Visio or PowerPoint or whatever it is, uh, but it really is about mapping the processes, inputs, people, controls that I have, uh, and figuring out where are my vulnerabilities. And again, going back to that boring terminology slide, vulnerabilities are not just in technology. It could be in processes, all right? It could be in communications. I need to identify them, identify my assets that are critical for my business, and an asset, again, could be a piece of information, could be a server, could be a person that's critical for my operations. And then start figuring out, all right, how do I protect them? But before I do that, I need to account for the threats, okay? And mapping threats is, is fun, because you get to talk to people who care about the business and manage the risk and they will tell you who they're up against because that's what they do. They, you know, running a business is basically managing risk. That's it, all right? It's making sure that I can make money and no one else can interfere with that. Simple. Uh, so why does I identify my threats? It could be competitors, all right? Internal employees, nation states, whatever, you know, we come up in this discussion, I can map out how bad are they, all right? What do they know about me? What their capabilities are, okay? Um, and then I can start applying everything in the context of what I have access to. And usually I have access to logs from all those devices running in my network, spitting out information that I usually disregard or throw into a SIM that no one cares about because it was just used to check a box in the compliance report. Um, but I really love those logs, okay? And it, and it doesn't cost anything. I mean, storage is cheap, all right? You just throw all the logs somewhere because you're going to need, blah. 
you're going to need them at some point. Something that doesn't really seem very important at, right now may be critical later on when I have some more information that might correlate back and give me a fuller picture of, oh, I'm being profiled. Oh, I'm being attacked. And things kind of connect. Uh, again, so far I haven't seen a product that does this. So if you're working for a vendor or if your vendor's here, please fix this shit and stop fucking around with, with like useless AVs and, and firewalls because they don't work. Um, and don't get rid of logs, please. Please, every, every IR person will tell you that they never have enough information because someone just threw the logs two weeks ago. Fact. And then start working on the intelligence part. This is the part where it becomes a little more fun because you're dealing not just with raw intelligence from your internal systems, but you need to talk or get intelligence from other sources, like marketing, like sales, all right? Like biz dev and competitors and partners who will all tell you different things about what's going on in the market, in the area, in whatever it is that may affect your business. If someone else got owned and he's working in the same business as I am, I might be the next target because someone might be targeting you know, power companies or software development of, of a very particular aspect. Talk to customers, analysts, certs. All of those entities will gladly give you information and intelligence that is super relevant to how you plan your defenses. And then compound additional elements, like early warning signs. Just behavior, behavioral things, right? PCs behaving erratically. Okay, uh, users calling in to, to the help desk. And, and you track those trends and you correlate them to other events and you can start figuring out, hey, there might be something here that's worth digging through and kind of figuring out, not just re-imaging some user's PC, but re-imaging it and taking the old image and running some basic forensics on it. Maybe something was actually running there, All right? We've done this dozens of times just based on behaviors inside the organization that were overlooked before and it's like, okay, we'll just fix it. Don't, just, just wait a minute, give me the image. I'll, I'll figure out what's going on there. And if there's nothing, cool, we're not being attacked. That's, <laughs> that's a good thing in defense. Uh, the human factor. That anyone who tells you that there's no patch for human stupidity, and if, if you've been to our red team class, you know, you know how, what, what we think about it, you're wrong, all right? Training and awareness does work, okay? Once you slap someone really hard in the face, they know don't deal with that guy, all right? Don't mess around with him because he's gonna slap me in the face next time I see him. Just human nature. All right, this is exactly what you need to do inside the organization based on the red team and the pen testing and the other security exercises that you do because if you won't do it, someone else will. And they're not gonna be nice and get paid to do that and hand you off a report. They're gonna own the shit out of you and dox you or steal all your money or your private keys or whatever it is. Uh, so talk to them, figure out how they affect your posture, where are the gaps, and just work on that awareness side. You'll see tremendous changes in your security posture. Again, if you focus on the right elements, all right? This doesn't mean send an email to global. We need everyone to be a little more diligent about opening attachments and PDFs in their emails. No, wrong, doesn't work, okay? Give them live examples, own them, show them how you're like, deleting their files, all right, or removing their, their, their cookies from the website, from their browser, so they have to log in again to every site. They'll feel it. They'll bitch about it and say, why? I had everything nailed down. Why are you screwing with my PC? It's like, because you weren't diligent, right? Here's where you failed, and here's how to be aware of not failing again, and it works. It's just human behavior. It's training. It's basic. 
And then correlate. This is hard. Again, there's no magic product with blinky lights and, and network ports that you can feed all that stuff into because this, this is like raw, unstructured data from local news, you know, global news, regional news, uh, events. Anyone who's dealt with like phishing scams and, and exploits and whatever it is will tell you. Talk to a, any AV, AV vendor here. They'll tell you that there's, there's a schedule for attacks f throughout the year that we know about. All right, there are holidays, there are sporting events, there are global events. NCAA starts, bam, phishing, you know, sites getting set up with malware and shit on it. Uh, Olympics, we're on. Prince Harry, you know, waving his, his ding dong and in Vegas, pff, in the news. Watch, watch the 11 o'clock news, new videos. Everyone knows that, and it's really easy to tune into that, and you need to compound that back into your intelligence gathering so you know to expect something, all right? You're not just sitting there waiting for, for your AV to tell you, oh, yeah, you've been owned. Sorry. Once you're at that position where you can actually figure out stuff beyond the narrow slit of view that you were given before, you can start acting. And that's where it gets really, really interesting, I would say. And we'll get to the legal stuff in, in a minute. Um, you've built you know, some kind of a defensive posture because you know what you're dealing with now. All right? You've mapped out your adversaries. You know how they act. You know their MOs. You trained your people to react to things, to, to you know, alert you on suspicious behaviors. You combine some technology into the mix because you, someone needs to write all those scripts to correlate the data and kind of figure out what's going on and, and do some trending on behavioral you know, network and, and calls and shit like that. And you start working with other people because, you again, you can share that data and see how that affects the industry or the vertical or the region or whatever it is. Yeah, this is hard. Before you do that, you need to figure out what, where do you stand, all right? We talked about getting your security mojo, like defensive mojo all straightened out. Again, this is as hard as mapping. Lying to yourself won't get you very, very far, all right? Um, at least in the long run. It can get you compliant, it can, it can, can pass you an audit, uh, but once you really figure out where your gaps are, you know what you need to, to achieve. You know what you need to kind of account for. Again, expect constant changes. If you will show me a document, and it's even worse if, if it's printed, that says security strategy, I'm gonna shoot you in the leg, it's wrong. There, there isn't such a thing. You have a security defensive framework all right, that, that gets updated all the time. Why? Because your threat keeps changing, your business keeps changing. All right? Hence, your security posture and defense strategy should change and adapt and support all those changes. Again, never, never, ever sign off of like a security policy. Again, unless you just want to get compliant. But I can give you that. All right, you want to be ISO, PCI, whatever you want. I have the documents. Just change the company name, change the like business units. Give me half a day with your auditors without even knowing what you're doing and without even looking at your network, I'll get you compliant. Done, easy. And then educate people about it, all right? There is, you know, I've seen hundreds of security policies lying in drawers that never saw the light of day because they're security, all right? They're secret, and no one knows about them. They have to be applied back to the business. They have to be applied back to the processes and people that we talked about before. Otherwise, again, they'll never work, all right? They're just some, some compliance checking document and adapt. Keep adapting to the business to support it. Don't stop it. If someone wants to open up a new connection to some third party, go ahead. They probably need it 
for the business to make more money to pay your salary. Find a way to support it and secure it and allow them to do that. All right? Don't be that asshole that says, uh-uh, no, close all the ports, this doesn't work, connect through, whatever. All right? Figure out a way to work with the business. You'll get way more credit to do that um, than just not going to work. Put a firewall, put a PIX on it, you know, air gap it, whatever it is. And then align outwards. Compare notes with peers. Other people are facing the same problems. Okay? And even your competitors will be willing to talk to you. Trust me. I've worked in the AV industry, in the security industry, in the, on the vendor side. We would kill each other on the sales field, literally. But look at the researchers on the back end. They're sharing information all the time, willingly, freely, supporting each other. Find those channels that will help you compare notes in terms of the threats that you're facing, in terms of the, the attacks that you're, you're seeing. It just benefits everyone. And there are, there are ways to do that, securely, you know, you know just write off some, some of the internal IP information and you're fine. Come to conferences. Keep track of what's going on on the offensive side, right? If someone's developing or, or looking or researching even a new area, make sure that you figure out how it applies to you. Do I need to do anything, all right? Do I need to test it on my network, on my business, and see how it affects me? Keep track of it. This is hard work, again. Even if at offense, you know that this is hard. And at defense, it's harder because you need to cover way more ground than just someone poking holes in, at SAP or, or SQL Server, right? Because they just have one target. You have a landfill. Never accept a successful audit. Or, or a compliance test or, or something like that. It's just bullshit. Again, it's just for the business. It's minimizing risk of getting sued and paying fines. All right? And if it comes up all you know, flashy green lights, doesn't apply. Someone is doing a bad job. Get someone else to do it and get, you, get them to show you the gaps because there will always be gaps. We talked about this before. All right? It'll usually prove the opposite. And if you do accept it, especially compliance, it basically means that you are now one with the lowest common denominator in your industry. Awesome, right? How does that make you feel? <laughs> and remember, it's not about technology or people or skills, right? It's bullshit. It's about cat herding. It's about kind of <laughs> making sure that they all work together and don't inf interfere and the business keeps running. Now, we talked about getting information on your competitor, on your competitor, sorry, threat communities. And it's, it's kind of, yeah, you've been waving your hands here and, and bullshitting about it, but that actually works. Um, and it works because you own a big chunk of the playing field, all right? You've just ignored it a tail now. How about using it to your advantage to figure out what the other guys are doing? Set traps. Again, this is counter Intel 101. You can read all about it. Uh, set traps in terms of intelligence and technology. All right? Intelligence could be just data lying around, publish you know, fake stuff and see who acts upon it all right? to figure out who's out there to get you and kind of fuck with your security posture. Set technology traps. We have all of that, and it's mostly free. Use it. Use it smartly, not just, you know, honeypot in a random place. Put something that's relevant to you. And if you want to have more fun, booby trap stuff. Work with law enforcement and, and legal. Again, I'm not a lawyer, so find, find one. Find a very good one. You'll see what I mean in, in a few slides. Um, and figure out ways to gather intelligence on your threat communities. That closes the gap in terms of that, you know, 10 steps that they're ahead of you to one, two, and maybe zero. Because you'll be able to know exactly when you're going to get attacked, or approximately, which is good enough as a defender if I need to kind of brace up and, and reinforce my, my defenses, 
for a particular attack because I know exactly what's going to happen. So a few examples. And this, again, this is real life. I've, I've kind of redacted the, the, the parts that my, may expose clients or organizations. Um, in this specific example, we've identified our threat community, our threat agents. Um, we've located their hangouts, like where they usually log into forums to keep track of things and exchange information and figure out plans or, or tools or whatever it is. Um, we assimilated into those forums so we can be a little more proactive and active in those forums uh, and get to a point where we can manipulate stuff for a lack of better technical term. Um, manipulate in terms of backdooring it and making sure that it leaves like a specific signature that we can use later on in our defensive posture to say, I know where that came from. I put it there. All right, and they're using it against me now, so I have the advantage. Uh, again, update the custom signatures in our de detection system and just kick back and, and wait for it. So this is the Hangout. Uh, in this particular example, it's, it's uh, an organization that was you know, browsing this forum. And in that forum, someone published a, a rat, okay? Uh, and we knew that our threat agents or, or threat communities were using all sorts of tools that were published in this forum. So it was very likely that someone's going to use that rat against us or our clients. Uh, and it's it's a you know it's a typical rat. It works you know on, on Firefox and IE and whatever it is. Uh, tracks processes. Works 100 percent you know with Win7, Vista, XP3, uh, blah blah blah. It's got nice GUI. Um, you can see computers connecting and full control, and it's all fun and games. Again, you've seen this a hundred times if you're, you're, you're looking into tools that, that attackers are using. This is one of them. It's a little different, but again. So remember when I said that we keep track of that form and we assimilate it into it. In this particular case, we were able to any lawyers or law enforcement in the crowd? Good, all right, let's keep it between us. Um, we managed to um, modify this post, okay, that this person posted here, um, so that we could download the RAT, right? There's a link afterwards for, for some file sharing stuff. Um, so we downloaded it, modified it, and posted it back to the same file sharing site and just updated the link on the post so that everyone who now downloads this thing is, is downloading our rat. Um, and the modification basically said, you know what, you like rats, I'm gonna pat, put a rat in your rat. So we used the same tool to track them that they were, you'll see it work in a second. Um, so this was, this was cool, and I'll, I, I have like a short video of how we actually do that. And again, it's, it's, it's all about playing in the same playing field as your adversary. You don't want to put like Dooku on it, all right? And you want to play at the same level because you don't want to raise too much suspicion when, you, you know, when the thing gets caught, all right? So we want to make, make it look like someone else from the forum was fucking with them. It was like, hey, I, got, I owned every, every installation of the rat that you that you ran. Uh, another, you know, nice case. Uh, everyone remembers Dark Comet? Yeah? Dark Comet? Cool tool, very useful. Um, it became too useful when, 10 minutes, all right, when uh, the Syrian government started using it against dissidents in their own country. And the guy who wrote Dark Comet was like, oh, fuck, this is bad. I was like, this is not what I intended to. All right, stealing money is fine, but killing people, eh, I don't feel like it. So we stopped development, shut down the site, no more downloads, and everyone was freaking out. I was like, where's Dark Comet? And I was like, hmm, people are going to miss this shit. <laughs> what if we get the latest version of Dark Comet that was available, um, find somewhere to post it, insert a rat into it, release it, 
and then see what happens. And again, same forum, uh, people were kind of asking, oh, what's up with our comet? It's gone, it was so cool, blah, 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 blah. And we were like, oh, you know what? There you go, fresh copy. It's the latest version, you can download it. It's all cool, legit. Everyone stop freaking out, you can still use it. Yeah. So here's a quick example of, of what we did to Dark Comet. Um, this is, again, Dark Comet, the latest version. It works, it's running, it's legit. It's a little slow because it's, it's on my VM and it's like 64 bits, so it's like, what's going on? MacBook Air can't handle it. Um, yeah, thank you, Dark Coder, for bringing us this wonderful piece of software. Where's my mouse? Uh, so we use Celesti Binder, which comes packed with Dark Comet, and it's basically a tool to bind several files together and make them run one by one, uh, and they're packed into one single executable. So we added the Dark Comet binary as the first file, uh, sorry, as the second file, and the, the first one is just a meterpreter shell that's compiled for Windows. Uh, we plop the Dark Comet icon on it, bind it, and we have a new executable now that basically runs Meterpreter and then Dark Comet. Simple, right? What's gonna happen on the receiving end, on someone who's running it? Nothing, you don't see anything because Meterpreter is kind of slick behind the scenes. Uh, so we get the new binary, and we call it Dark Comet underscore or something like that. When we run it, this is now the attacker or someone who downloaded this whole package. We have obviously an interpreter shell in the background. Uh, we run it and we get dark comet. Again, same behavior, nothing happens. Like it's all cool. Dark coder is still kind of running the, the things behind. But behind the scenes, we got the interpreter shell. And yeah. Uh, now this is cool because now I have access to someone's PC and that someone is my threat community because I released this in a very particular forum that I know that my threat communities or agents are hanging out with and are looking for this particular piece of software. So how about that for intelligence, huh? When? We had some more examples of, of forums and, and, and again, hangouts and, and counter intel in a more proactive manner. Uh, key loggers that we backdoored. Um, this is fun. This is uh, a cryptor, all right, or a fudder, uh, which basically the whole purpose of this is you take an executable, usually a rat or a trojan, you plop it into this tool and it decry encrypts it in a manner that would, would bypass AV detection, right? It's like 100% FUD output. Download here, same deal, all right? Take it, modify it. We actually had to fix it because it, was, it wasn't FUDing good enough. It still had like two AVs detecting it. Stupid coders. So we, again, I, I can't show you the actual what we did to the tool, so this is like a, a lame ass example. But we basically took the binary, decompiled it, figured out where, what, what the dude was doing wrong in terms of the crypting, uh, fixed that, and then uh, modified it to a point where we injected our own signature in every binary that it outputted, right? And using that very simple signature, we could set up Snort, which you'll see later on, to detect that signature in every network traffic, all right? Again, very simple. I know what I'm supposed to look for. Uh, so we found a code cave in, in the format of the binary that, uh, that the cryptor was, was pushing out. Um, and again, this is, this is very lame because I, I should have knopped like a few commands before it and knopped a few commands after it just, just in case something gets executed. And my signature is I'm right here right, in ASCII, straight down the binary, it's always gonna be there. And it doesn't affect the cryptor or, or the Trojan. So this is, this is kinda cool. Uh, again, this is from the, the CPU perspective. Code, 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 and then 
code cave, bam, here's my signature. Right? Again, it doesn't affect the, the execution of, uh, of the cryptor. So now, every time that someone downloaded that cryptor and is trying to obfuscate binaries, I'm like, awesome. It's 100% FUD, no AV detection. And they're like, yeah, awesome. But every executable that they create, although no AV is going to detect it, my stupid ass snort with a custom signature, bam, every time. And I know exactly where it came from. I know exactly who's after me and what, it, what are they doing. All right? So in, in this example, we're just kind of you know, downloading, just generating network traffic. We're downloading the, the two versions of the file, the original one that was crypted using the plain vanilla cryptor and the crypted file that was generated by our modified one. And this is my stupid ass snort rule. Again, we've got company. Someone is, is pushing those files over. And if I look at the pickup files, I'm running them through Snort. I'm just going to breeze through this, maybe. All right. Yeah, this is my rule. Zero detection on the original one. And if I run the, the pickup for our file, I have an alert. And I know that someone has just used my kick-ass cryptor to try to own me. I can block it. I can do whatever I want with it. <clears throat> wow. Sound effects live. Now, you might think, dude, this, this dude is crazy. Some you know, weird Israeli standing here talking shit, you know, doing all sorts of funky shit. Uh, and this is probably not legal and shady like no one else knows. Well, not necessarily. Uh, yes, yeah, some of those were done outside the U.S. Some were actually done for U.S. companies. Guess what? Law is hackable. Why? Because people wrote it. <laughs> and people fuck up all the time. So you find loopholes. You get a lawyer that doesn't just tell you, go away, all right? I didn't hear that. Just go away. You find a lawyer that goes like, huh, you can't do that. But if we set up this company there, and that company hires someone else to do this and track the information, just kind of sent the information back to you. Yeah, we can work with that. So again, find smart lawyers that are like aggressive and, and cool, and they'll let you do stuff that you've never dreamed that you could do. Fact, all right? Uh, good example, Microsoft, kick-ass lawyers, all right? Um, too bad they're probably better than the developers, but kick-ass lawyers, <laughs> they brought out a huge botnet with full access to the PCs running the botnet. All right? I'm talking about full code execution on every PC that was part of the botnet. Talk about owning shit. All right? How did they do that? Trademark infringement claims. I kid you not. Read all lab, read about it. It's all documented. It's not the first time that they did it. It's just Amazing, like millions of computers. Code execution, Who? I've cleaned your computer. It's like, what the fuck? Other tools, I'm gonna really breeze through this. Kipo, Everyone, anyone heard of Kipo? Yeah, Kipo is awesome. If you're running Linux boxes, run this. You'll have lots of fun uh, with people logging in and kind of figuring out their way around the box and, and like, it doesn't run, it doesn't work. Um, Artillery, some, some dude called Dave wrote this in probably a drunken stupor or, or, or a flight. Uh, it's really nice. Again, use it to get intelligence on who's trying to get you. Um, then, and only then, you can plop in technology, all right? After you got all this, you know, counter intel going on and you got feeds coming in from your adversary and you know what's going on, uh, only then, Go for the technology solutions. Seam, SOC will be a major focus in your security architecture just to process all this shit and analyze it and correlate th things, all right? Because until now, no way you, you were using your SIM or SOC correctly. And this is irrelevant. This was for like stupid people in black hat. I had to do the pretty pictures and stuff like that. So. And I don't have time. Uh, bottom line of this is that we were doing some counter-intel inside the company. We planted false information to track down a fraud case. 
uh, found someone whose computer was Trojan and tracked it back to a command control center in Eastern Europe, found the bad guys, prosecuted them, and they're dead now. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Remember to play nice with others, all right? I talked about all this information going back and forth. Play nice with, with certs, governments, peers, competitors. They will talk to you, all right? And they'll be very happy to share information and get information from you. And it's just going to be awesome. And remember, you're not alone out there, all right? And don't focus just on technology, all right? Security has nothing to do with compliance or technology. We're protecting a business, a process. I know, it's like, whoa, mind fuck. But get used to it. That's what you do. That's who pays your salary. And this is my obligatory kind of Zen slide. Ooh. If you're a vendor, fix your shit. Come up with new products that actually matter. I can't say it more clearly. All right? Stop fucking around with WAFs and, and firewalls and, and, and application firewalls. They don't matter. Find stuff that matters for businesses. You're not protecting technology. If you're a defender, own up to your data. Be diligent, be proactive, hack the law, all right? Talk to other people in the business because, again, you're not defending technology. You're defending a business. Gather intelligence on your adversaries. Know who you're defending it from. Otherwise, you're just, you know, running a big mental masturbation concept. It's like, ooh, I'm defending here. Great. Or paying a lot of money for vendors that don't know shit about their products. Take the initiative. It's going to be fun. Sec defense can be sexy. Again, it's, it's mind-numbing, but it can be interesting. That's all the time I have. Questions? Awesome. Let's go party.